That makes me think of whenever we were standing at the front of the aisle in front of all our family and friends and my dad was officiating our wedding. Towards the end of the ceremony, he said a prayer and in the prayer, he asked God to bless our loins. My grandma about choked on her own spit. We got so many messages. People that were there <laughs> thought it was so weird. Honestly, at the time, we thought it was a little weird and then to top it off, he messaged us. As soon as we got home from our honeymoon, <laughs> I got a text message with the scripture to be fruitful and multiply and I was like, he's got to be joking. I think his <laughs> mind was on grandchildren. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I thought it was so funny and weird at the time, but it's funny how opinions change. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Cody. And I'm Jesse. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing a rather emotional subject for the both of us that we just feel really called to share with all of you. Right, it's probably gonna make you a little bit uncomfortable and question some of your ideas and your thoughts around having children and how many children you should have. We just wish that we would have heard this message years ago before we were ever married and we truly want to challenge other young couples and families views on these topics. And I'm really sorry if I get a bit emotional in today's video. It's not just because I am five months pregnant. Part expecting. of the reason, I'm sure. <laughs> this content really hits hard with the both of us and has drastically changed our own views on this topic in the past couple years. Unfortunately, we both never were taught any of the doctrine that we are about to discuss with you on bearing children prior to getting married, even though we were both raised in church and put our faith in Jesus whenever we were very young. And sadly, we also have never heard any of this information in the past 10 years of marriage preached at any of the churches we've been to. And it's only been revealed to us through discernment from the Holy Spirit and an end up study of God's design of sex and marriage. Our deep diving into this subject actually started when we began studying and researching God's design for sex to give us a more biblical knowledge to further equip us for the course that we have mentioned to y'all in the past that we are in the process of creating. It's a premarital course that we are creating for engaged or dating to marry Christian couples that are striving to live a life of sexual purity, overcome sexual fears, temptation, and morality and ultimately having a Christ-centered marriage filled with no regret. Guilt-free sex. sex. Right. <laughs> Just as God intended That's it. Right. If you're interested in the course or you know of someone who would greatly benefit from the course, go ahead and sign up for our email list, which is in the description where you will be the first ones notified whenever the course goes live. Or if you would like to support us in our ministry and keep the channel going, you can also watch this shameless Patreon <laughs> plug. Hey guys and gals, if you enjoy our content and would like to support our mission to spread the gospel of Christ through biblical teachings and faith Faithful living, click the link in the description to donate through our Patreon account. We are working on ideas to provide additional tiers and bonus content for you there, but these things take time, so if you can, please show us some support so that we can dedicate more of our time to you guys. Now, back to the show. Sorry, we couldn't avoid a quick plug for our course and our Patreon because we know that it's going to be life-changing and we want to be able to get it into the hands of so many young couples. Getting back to today's video subject, in retrospect, we have realized that our view on having children, including the amount of children we should have, was not in line with scripture for most of our marriage so far, and we thankfully now have a biblical understanding of how God feels about families having children, as well as the amount of children a couple should have. If you follow our channel at all, then you know that we're all about talking about awkward and uncomfortable subjects, and we shed biblical insight on them and really challenge challenge us and those around us to strive for biblical standards in our lives and in our families. It's not always easy to hear scripture and make the changes that are absolutely necessary to align our lives to look like what Christ has called us to. But if we do not do this, then we just remain what we like to call baby, baby Christians. Christians. Never growing, but remaining stagnant in our faith. If you are new here and you like feeling a bit uncomfortable and enjoy hearing the word of God and how it 
applies to your life, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the like button on this video that really helps us out a lot. We post videos once a week where we dive into scripture on tough subjects. So let's go ahead and dive into today's topic and what the Bible says about having children and how you should determine how many children you should have. Drum roll, please. We will also be showing how this biblical view drastically contradicts the worldview and how the worldview has infiltrated, sadly, the Protestant church right. and thus dominates in most Christian homes today. And unknowingly, most Christian families do not have a biblical perspective on these topics. They mm -hmm. just believe that the choice to have children, the decision of how many children to have and the ways in which we prevent having children is just simply a choice left up to us and God. God remains rather silent on the matter, yeah. which I mean, isn't true, obviously. How, but that's how we were. Yeah, that's like how we were as well. Which, if I'm being honest with you guys, raised Protestant, both of us, I have never once heard a message preached on having babies. Never heard the term open to life. We've ever. never heard a preacher <laughs> speak out on the decision to not have children and what would be a good biblical reason to not have children and what would even be a worldly reason not to have children. I guess those subjects are just a little too awkward for churches or maybe they just find them so terribly controversial that they avoid the subject altogether. And we all know that today's churches don't want to be stepping on anybody's toes. And that's why we're here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We like stepping on toes. We like our toes to also likewise be stepped on and order to improve ourselves and further sanctify our lives and be more like Christ. So I hope you have some thick socks on. <laughs> some, you might want to put your steel-toed <laughs> boots on for this episode. We have always tried to align our lives as close to biblical standards as possible, but these were just honestly standards that we knew nothing about going into marriage. So to have something revealed to us essentially saying, hey, for the last nine years or so of your marriage, you've been looking at this all wrong, doing it all wrong, let's just say it was quite convicting. And Conviction is never fun. <laughs> No, but it not. is necessary in every Christian's life if they are going to grow. You should find something wrong with what you are doing if you are never convicted about anything. Truthfully, for the last several years, basically after having our first son, Asher, he is four, we felt a calling on our life to have a large family. But when we told people, other <laughs> Christians, our families and friends about this call, they would look at us probably like you are looking at us right now, like we were a bit crazy and to be honest, quite shocked. <laughs> Yo, why would we want a large family in today's day and age? Don't you know, they would say, how expensive children are? The world is such a horrible place. <laughs> These are the things you hear, guys. You hear things like, you don't want to be the reason for overpopulation, you know, global warming. You want it to be all your fault. And the list goes on and on and on, but no matter what anyone said, or even what we thought or felt about having more children, because quite frankly, the thought of having loads of kids also sounded terrifying to us at the time. We were not oblivious at all to the fact that babies and children are a lot of work and most days when we were both new parents we didn't know if we would be able to make it dinner with all of us alive with one child let alone make it through our entire life with a bunch of them. <laughs> right. But no matter what was said or how long our nights and days were, we still knew that we were being called to have more children. And we honestly just could never come up with a number when we would discuss it. Still don't know a number. <laughs> We didn't realize that this calling we felt was really a longing in our souls to do what God had commanded in his word and fulfill letting him lead us in all areas of our lives, including determining how many children we should, should or shouldn't have. And that's probably why we don't have a number. It all made sense to us after studying God's word and multiple books and doctrines on sex and marriage. So what does scripture say about having children? Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we can say that unlike most churches today, the Bible is not silent on this matter. Nope. The first observation that we can clearly make from Scripture in Genesis 1.28 is that having children was a part of God's plan from the very beginning. When he gave that first command to the very first couple, Adam and Eve, God blessed them and God said to them to be fruitful 
and multiply and fill the earth. God didn't just command them in that moment, but the command was a part of a blessing. So God clearly sees children not as a curse, not as a burden, but something that should bless our lives. And this is reinforced by many other scriptures in the Bible as well. Some would say, well, that command was before the fall. Well, it was, <laughs> but it was also given to Noah and his family That's after right. the flood, which was after the fall. It, this is in Genesis 9. And you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. Being fruitful and multiplying is a part of God's good plan for us and it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. He considers children a reward and a blessing. We find this actually echoed again in Psalm 127 verse 3 through 5 where it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is a man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. It is evident just in these few scriptures that the Lord views children as precious and to be treasured from babies on to adulthood. All throughout scripture, children are seen as a gift and children are considered a blessing, not a hindrance or burden that so many consider them now. The Bible even clearly contradicts this common worldview and says that our children should be viewed as a crown and glory. And this is in Proverbs 17, verse 6. Grandchildren are the crown of the age and the glory of children is their fathers. The children of the Proverbs 31 woman rise up and they bless her name. That's right. They bring blessings to their mother. There is much heartache in a home and a family that long to have children but may suffer with infertility. And this is common today, just as it was in the Bible. Couples who want to conceive and have a hard time doing so are saddened because they desire that blessing and that crown of glory that God talks about. In Genesis 25, Isaac prayed for his wife to be able to conceive a child and the Lord heard his prayer and his wife became pregnant. God delights in these prayers because he delights in children. If you are struggling with infertility, our hearts truly go out to you and we pray that you find comfort in knowing that God very much cares about the battle you are facing. That longing in your heart is there for a reason. It right. says in Psalm 113.9, he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Though today some view children as an inconvenience, the woman who is able to have children is indeed blessed. However, even for those who cannot give birth, adopting children is actually a great option and a wonderful blessing, and it illustrates God's heart for redemption. Often, whether or not a woman can conceive, adoption is part of God's plan for giving women a happy home just the same. I think it is easy to come to the conclusion after seeing these scriptures that God intends for His children, us, to bear children That's and right. raise them up in the faith and be a part of God's generational work. God delights in blessing families with children. Part of God's plan and how he intends to work in the world is through the legacy of godly families. This is why he has commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. So on to the big question, how many children then should a family have? Yes. Mm, should there be absolutely no restrictions at all in the amount? Is it permissible <laughs> or shall we say biblical for a Christian couple just simply to choose not to have any children at all? Yeah, the Bible is not specific in the amount of children a family should have. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> there are families in the Bible that had a ton of children and then there are families that struggled with infertility and either had a few children or had none at all. There are also people in the Bible that dedicated their entire life to building up the kingdom of God and therefore they chose not to have any children. It's evident that God does encourage us to have children. He has commanded us to, in fact, and that command hasn't changed. And whenever it comes to the amount of children, the only so-called numerical value in the Bible expresses that we should want to have a quiver full of them. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it means that we should love our quiver 
If you don't know what a quiver is, it's essentially the pack that goes on your back whenever you are an archer and that's where all of your arrows are stored. You should want that quiver to have a ton of arrows in it. Your children are representative of the arrows in that analogy. And in normal situations, we should pursue to have a quiver full of those arrows. One thing that Cody brought up when we were studying notes on this is that the arrows are not full in there and they've used some and there's just a couple and they're banging around on one another. Nothing and so, to support them or hold them up. So it's an interesting thought to think that if you're, you have a quiver and that quiver's full of children, those children are there to support one another and give them stability. And so, you know, brothers and sisters are good for each other and then and if you don't have that quiver full and you only have a few there. Port structure is lacking. Yeah, so it's just an interesting so. thought. However, there are situations in life restricting the number of children you have may be appropriate as long as the reasoning isn't selfish and worldly, but centered around living a life that is God-centered right. and kingdom building. The problem with most modern day Christian family views is that their driving reasons for not having any children at all are limiting their number of children are prompted by fear, unbelief, selfishness, or worldliness. This world encourages material blessings over the blessings of children. And the Bible says that you should be storing up treasures in heaven and not on this earth but everything you see today, and most people's reasons for putting off children, is not because they can't afford to feed their family, it's because they can't afford the newest car, the bigger house, the multiple vacations a year. And afford more children. Yeah, so. So I, what what is it that we should be trying to store up here? Like she said, we're supposed to be storing up treasures in heaven not treasures here on earth. So how do you store up treasures in heaven? Well, one of the ways is to raise up godly children that their souls themselves will be in heaven, which is a blessing to God. But also these godly children that you raise biblically to share the gospel and further God's kingdom will be adding more souls exponentially down the road and their children and their grandchildren etc so it's just having what, children is how we store yeah. up one of the big ways that we can store up treasures in heaven to me if you think about it it's what our hearts should desire because we're all going to grow old we're all going to die and that is something that we actually can leave behind that matters because none of the material blessings or none of the things right. that we acquire in this life can leave that type of legacy and can further the kingdom of god we imagine a lot and desire to be sitting around a dinner table one day having a table full of children and grandchildren running around playing i want to see that crown come to fruition <laughs> yeah. when she gets emotional she can't yeah. speak well i can't speak no matter what <laughs> Just read a bunch of our comments. No. Everyone knows that she has such a weird accent. She can't speak. But yeah, that's that's what our desire is. And I God's guess. put it on our heart to share this with other people and challenge you to look at why maybe you've put off having kids. And is it biblical yes. and justifiable? Mm -hmm. I know that can be really hard to hear. It was a very hard realization for us to come to, thinking back on why we waited so long to have kids. You know, we actually have an entire video on whether or not we regretted waiting to have kids for mm -hmm. over six years of our mm -hmm. marriage. And you can watch it we'll here. Link it. We'll link it for you guys. And while I don't think it's a good thing to completely regret decisions because I feel like the decisions you make, whether you like them or not, ultimately lead you to where you are now. Yeah, we so basically what we all we can do yeah, is take what we regret and move forward and learn from it. So while I, I can't say we necessarily regret it, we do believe that our motives for waiting were shallow ultimately whenever mm -hmm. we think about it. And if we would have had this biblical viewpoint, then we would probably have started having children a whole lot sooner mm -hmm. and have a whole lot more dense quiver <laughs> at this right point. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of sad to think about. Yeah, oh, it just shows that um, at that time in our 
early 20s, we were putting, we put a lot of trust in God, but were we trusting God in all areas? No, like like we said earlier, we you grow in your sanctification, um, you challenge yourself, and then we're here to share this message, and maybe you're 23 hearing it, and not 33. <laughs> That's right. Like we are. So really, you have to look at you and your husband's heart and have God reveal to you if your motives for limiting your number of children are right in his eyes. And that's kind of the entire point that we're trying to make here. Yeah, some examples, um, because there are biblical reasons for waiting. There are serious reasons that people should wait or put off having kids. If you're a missionary couple, your decision to never have children in order to advance your efforts to reach people for Christ is completely biblical. And I mean, it's understandable. And not to say that missionaries don't have children. No, they there are a lot do. of them yes. that go ahead and do it anyway, despite the risk. But depending on your specific situation, where you're a missionary, right. it would make sense if you're putting God's kingdom, because you are building up treasures in heaven. So in that situation, it's much like living like Paul did mm -hmm. in the scriptures, you know, remaining childless for the sake of Christ. However, this is completely different than the motives for the modern couple with their own personal dreams and consider children more of an inconvenience or a hindrance in their pursuit of their own dreams and goals. The heart of this type of couple would be considered sinful and not in line at all with God's word. And I know a lot of motivation for families to forego or limit the number of children that they have is to avoid hardship, heartache, or suffering and fear of the unknown is really where this stems from. Now, is that biblical to fear those things and to not want those things? I mean, the Bible actually says that the world persecuted Christ, so of course they're going to persecute us. Things are not going to necessarily be easy for us if the greatest person to ever walk the face of this earth went through trials and suffered. We should welcome them. Yes. So, I mean, we don't know if we would have a disabled child. We don't know if we're gonna suffer miscarriages. Right. We don't know if our child is gonna grow up and besides our very best efforts, instead of blessing us, they can curse us, disgrace us. It happened in the Bible. This is a common thing. Or our child may actually be seen as a loss. Like they may go to jail, they may go through all sorts of things and not actually become a gain to society. These are fears and things that are out of your control. Now, these are some things that we do know that come with every child, and that is raising each child demands our time and our attention. Yeah, we know that along with each child comes a financial commitment right. to provide for that child and his or her well-being. And we also know that with every child will come many, many men many <laughs> hours and times of self-denial, caring more about raising our children and doing it right than worrying about ourselves. Yes. But if you look at God's word, are any of these reasons good reasons to not pursue having a quiver full of children? Or are these reasons simply a reason to try and avoid a life of hardship? The Bible is clear that hardship will come right. and it actually should be welcomed according to scripture to help strengthen us like Cody was talking about before God's word says that we will face trials and tribulations you can find that in Acts 14 through 22 James chapter 1 verse 3 says for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and also though self-denial is hard the Bible says that there is great joy which is a fruit of the spirit found whenever you choose to give rather than to receive and this can be found in acts 20 verse 35 there are some reasons to wait on having kids or to put off having kids you know we mentioned the financial burden um a lot of people will say oh well how are you going to feed that amount of kids well i'm not going to go i'm not going to have the largest house i i might go without some things that you find necessary are these things that you are putting over children absolutely necessary and do they give you the excuse that you're trying to find to say well i wouldn't be able to provide for that many kids what we're trying to get across is that the amount of children you should have or if you should have children at all should not just be between you and your spouse you should also have god highly involved in this decision right. but one thing to mention is like health reasons for a mom sometimes pregnancy is life-threatening for her right. so obviously if you don't want to lose your 
wife, you know, you don't want to go through that type of risk, then you might would say, hey, we're not going to have any more kids. The doctor said that you are more than likely going to die. We have a friend that has ICP and, you know, that's a very high risk condition. It's rare. Mm -hmm. And she's had it with both pregnancies. And basically you put your the mom at risk and the baby at risk, very likely to give birth to a stillborn um, and so that might not be something you might say well we don't want any more kids like I said that would be between you and God to sum this part up most of the reasoning and not pursuing having many children stems from a world view which is radically different than a biblical view we sadly live in a world where material possessions and high bank accounts are considered to be far more of a blessing than the life of a child yeah where vacations and large homes are more important than fulfilling the command to be fruitful and multiply and the command to spend hours every day with your children raising them up and training them in the lord just having them is not not enough exactly you're also you parent called, them as yes, well. you're called to train them up and teach them the ways of the lord i know some of this is hard to hear and really makes you take a good look at your heart and your motives mm -hmm. sometimes we think that we're doing things the right way but deep down we know that god has given us a spirit of conviction and he wants us to turn from our ways and value his ways over our own jesus said in the lord's prayer your kingdom come your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven that even christ valued god's will over his own okay, so are we putting his will above our own cody and i feel very strongly about all of this that we have talked about today we want to see families reflecting biblical worldviews and not looking the same as secular culture we want marriages to be blessed and from them others will be blessed and come to know the goodness of god we believe in leaving a legacy that reflects the kingdom and not the world to follow god's first command to be free fruitful and multiply and applying this not just to bearing children but being fruitful with all of your life as a christian wanting to reach others for christ this is our calling to bear fruit our fruit is our testimony and greatest reflection of christ in our lives and us dying to our flesh and living in the spirit Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Because we are so passionate about this subject, we want the fruits of the Spirit to be so evident in our lives that we can't help but challenge others to know God more and seek Him and his righteousness. We are going to be making a few changes to the channel. I guess we can tell them. <laughs> we have already let y'all know about the course we will be releasing in the next couple months. Premarital course focused on sexual freedom and having a marriage that is Christ-centered. We're gonna be equipping Christian couples with the knowledge and tools necessary to have that, that freedom from sexual fear, temptation, and immorality, and is instead filled with no, no regret, regret. guilt-free <laughs> sex. <laughs> that's right. I don't yeah. know if you guys know that's my favorite part mm. about that. We finally are ready to tell you the name of the course, Be Fruitful and, and Multiply. multiply. Yeah. And we know that it's going to be life-changing for couples. And to reflect our course and the direction or course that our channel has <laughs> been going. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Can't help it. Oh, I had to say it. We will also be changing the name of our channel, our YouTube channel. We are still ironing out all the details, but it's going to be changing from Toops Time, which is our current and our original channel name, to our fruitful family don't freak out we will still be yeah. posting all the same types of content with our sit down talks and our vlogs but the channel name will better reflect our calling that we as a family continually are bearing fruit and we are challenging and equipping other families to bear fruit as well, no matter what season of life that they're in. I actually have this scripture that was part of my Bible reading today. When, and so when we say 
that we are still to bear fruit no matter what season of life. They will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green, to declare the Lord is just, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. No matter where you are, maybe you're a young couple that our course can help, or maybe you've been married 25 years, 50 years, I think this channel has a place for you. We can all bear fruit in any season, and seasons are always changing. Also, some rather exciting news that we have been holding off on telling you guys is that we are actually working on creating a podcast for all of you to enjoy that we will be posting weekly episodes to. This podcast is going to be called Fruitful Family, and <laughs> in the first season, we're going to be diving into the fruits of the Spirit and what the Bible has to say about each one of them and how we can bear more fruit and what bearing these fruits should look like in every stage and season of life. If you're just excited about this podcast, as we are, and can't wait for it to go live, then please sign up for our email list in the description where you will be the first ones notified when it does go live. Also, if you just want to support us in our ministry, make sure to visit that Patreon link where you can give to our ministry there. With each podcast episode, our patrons are going to actually receive early access to every episode of our podcast. Podcast, as well as access to exclusive episodes we record just for them. So that's where our Patreon will be going from here. Right now there's just one tier, but that's what we're going to have in the future for you guys. And let's not forget, we love hearing from you guys in the comment section. So please comment down below with your thoughts and questions about today's video or past videos if you're just now thinking of something. We almost always respond. Sometimes YouTube pushes comments back and hides them in a, in a very strange way where it's something I don't notice until months down the road, but I do my best to respond to just about every comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you. We will see you on the next one.